What's going on guys and welcome back to the honey stead. I grabbed my foraging basket and my Peterson field guide. I want to go for a little bit of a walk today and see if there's any any plant identification that we can talk about and uh, maybe do a little bit of foraging as well. So come on, let's go for a walk. This little plant right here is definitely not as recognizable as what it was a few a few months ago but this right here is goldenrod and every opportunity that i have this time of year whenever i see that any plant that i like to forage is going to seed sometimes i'll just come out and help help it go to seed and help help spread the seed so that next year we end up with a lot more goldenrod for us to harvest now it's always good to go for walks especially in the difference of seasons you want to kind of start to familiarize yourself with the way that plants look throughout the entire year in late august and september this plant is alive and vibrant and green and the flowers are just big poofy yellow golden rich flowers of goodness that not only do we get to benefit from but also our honeybees This beautiful mullein is going to be very gorgeous next year. But if I were to harvest mullein, this would be a good time to do it. Oh my goodness, the leaves are so soft. back here somewhere. He has been uh, working on creating a blind for himself so that when he goes hunting, he's got a little place that he can, uh, a little fort for himself. Um, so I gotta go find him. Good night, hiking up a mountain. All right, let me see it. This is a really good spot. You can see a lot, a lot of the trails. Notice the pattern. They run down there, pass behind the valley, and they bed right there. And then they go straight down that way. Either, yeah, they either go that way or I notice they go perch out into the field. To me, meat in your freezer and food in your pantry is equivalent to like having money in the bank. So it is a huge help that our, that our oldest has taking it upon himself to be the hunter of the family. And hopefully we'll give you guys an update on when he gets his next deer. Sounds like dad's on his way up to see your blind. Mm -hmm. He found us. I love seeing my husband and my son do stuff like this. So it's kind of exciting. My son has been working on this for just a couple of days. I mean, really it's nothing fancy. It's just a bunch of logs that he's cut down and stacked up by hand. And so, I mean, they're pretty heavy. I'm pretty proud of them. Probably gonna take a two by four or something, screw something in right here and then right here, just to hold it. Right here is just kind of thrown up on. You own Manuel Pelvis property. Yeah. I, the property lines, I, I'm right on the property line actually. It ends like right up over there though. No, I, don't know. I can't see him from here. The only way that I found him was the four wheeler because yeah. it's red. I mean, it's pretty solid. When I went down here the other day, I saw all two go as I like started building and everything. Cool. This is all just with the chainsaw and everything cool, I found on the ground.
the other day we got a bunch of mulch delivered from a tree company that they know that we would always take it. We actually use a lot of the mulch when it comes to our pastures, especially around our, our water troughs where our livestock go. Um, it tends to get a little muddy, so we'll always grab as much mulch as possible um, to use to kind of pat down and, and soak up some of that mud. But I completely forgot that I actually have some mushroom spores that I need to spread. So since my husband is grabbing a couple of scoops of this mulch anyways to go put around our livestock troughs, I'm gonna see if he can bring some up to the apothecary. And what are you two doing? We're, we're we, I was over you. there and we should see what we'll see if she's there. Yeah. And then she come in and then she said, take you, Nana, sit fine. You go for a ride? All right. Where are you going to be? Right up by the apothecary. Okay, right okay. here. Tell you what, these two together, oh boy. <laughs> A lot of you guys have uh, probably seen that my, my grandmother um, has moved back in with us. Uh, she lived with us for a little while and then went to go live with a few of our other family members, but, um, but she wanted to, to be back in Virginia with us. Um, and the rest of the family. So it's been pretty good, but we're trying to keep her as active as possible. And one of her activities that we're teaching her to do, uh, especially when she comes up to the apothecaries, we're giving her a project. And so the project is she is taking care and doing her own sourdough starter. And it's been a learning lesson for all of us. Oh, I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> Did I get you? No. Sorry. Yep. Lay it flat. There you go. Perfect. Oh, get the funnel. Grab the green oh, funnel. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, that's good. Okay, half a cup. Good. Roberto, and this one is, what's your name? Is? Jen. Jacob. It's perfect. That's perfect. Uh -huh. Good job. So this is day three. Okay. Yeah. Day three. And your mm -hmm. sourdough babies. Yep. His twins. They're twins. <laughs> okay. Kind of right here.
Is it good? Very good. My yeah. Mother. I sip a little bit and I sip again. It. <laughs> it's stuck. A good cup of tea and every opportunity that we can to come up here we definitely take advantage of it and make a cup of tea sit look at a good book and of course take you guys with us i received a package the other day from from a viewer named kirk Howes, and i have to uh, i have to say thank you because this is something that we have been wanting to do but they picked a whole bunch of of butterfly, of milkweed, of the seeds. Uh oh, I don't know if I should open it up here in the apothecary or not. All the little fluff is starting to kind of fly everywhere. But I'm gonna take some of these and I'm gonna spread them around our, our property so that we can start introducing more pollinator plants. I mean, we have a lot of native plants in our area, uh, but this is actually the perfect time to, to be able to spread some of the seed for, for next year's growth. And so I'm gonna warm up, have a cup of tea, and then go out and probably take care of that here in a couple of minutes. But I did wanna say thank you to Kirk. I really appreciate those seeds. This is going to be very exciting. I have a vision on what I'd like to do when it comes to planting, and I wanna take you guys and kind of show you some of the ideas that, that we have. It'll lock by itself? Yeah, it'll lock by itself. Oh I don't know who's having more fun. My 90 year old grandma on the side by side or my, or my kids that are driving her around. So here's my thought, okay? We've got a few spots on our property that are really hard to mow. And I actually really like the fact that the weeds start to grow um, because this is essentially where I find a lot of my medicinal herbs, whether it's yarrow, goldenrod especially. I have this whole bank of just weed growth that I don't mind letting it just be and do what it's supposed to do. One of the things that I really want to plant along this whole bank is crimson clover. I love the way crimson clover looks and I probably need to get that seed spread really now, now's the time that you would plant that, actually a month or so ago. So I'm hoping that I can get that done. And if I can't, then maybe by, maybe next year, which is fine. But I was thinking, since we have a whole bag of this gorgeous milkweed, just let it spread and do what it's supposed to do. But let's let the milkweed do what it is supposed to do. And wherever it decides to grow, I hope that it takes root and grows something beautiful. I'm excited to see to see what what decides to grow and as always don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old bye guys <laughs>